2014, the year women won. Women, hang up your pantsuits. In 2014, we won! For the first time ever, 100 women were elected to US Congress. Emma Watson called the UN to arms in the fight for equality. Malala Yousafzai backed the Nobel Peace Prize. Sure, before getting her award, Malala had been shot by the Taliban for going to school. 80% of the US Senate is still male, and Emma Watson's speech was answered with threats from sweaty palmed hackers to leak naked pictures of her that didn't exist unlike the ones of Jennifer Lawrence that did. But these are just details. 2014 marked an all-time high for female world leaders. 22 countries were led by women. Forbes ranked two women among the world's top 10 most powerful. Two to eight, 22 to 174, that's sort of equal, right? In fact, in 2014, Time magazine decided the need for feminism had so passed, it asked its readers to ban the word feminist, along with other totally over words like cringe and kale. So what did this new woman's world look like? It saw Angelina Jolie launch a global crusade against sexual violence. She and William Hague hosted ministers from more than 120 countries for the first ever summit to end sexual violence. On the day world leaders met, ISIS fighters conquered Mosul in Iraq and went door to door kidnapping and raping local women. A female Saudi fighter pilot took part in the first international airstrikes against ISIS targets in Syria. And those feminist champions at the Fox Network were there to report the news, which they dubbed Boobs on the ground. Would Thank that you. be considered boobs on the ground or no? <laughs> oh my what God. Kind of in the US, Baltimore Ravens star Ray Rice was caught on CCTV appearing to punch his fiance unconscious in a casino lift. The NFL was so outraged, it slapped him with a two week ban. And then he was suspended, briefly. That nastiness was all cleared up when the NFL overturned Rice's suspension after an appeal, and Mrs. Rice apologized. In South Africa, a young woman was shot four times by her boyfriend when she got up to use the loo in the middle of the night. Absolutely no one was distracted by the fact her killer was a famous sportsman. Oscar Pistorius was sent to jail, but could be out in ten months. Egypt, which suffers what human rights groups call an epidemic of sexual violence, criminalised sexual harassment for the first time. In India, a wave of high-profile gang rape murders prompted Prime Minister Narendra Modi to call sexual violence a national shame. But his message didn't reach reality TV audiences, at least one of whom thought it was OK to slap a female host if her dress was too short. By and large, 2014 was a bad year for lads who think rapes all shits and giggles. UK broadcaster ITV2 axed Dapper Laugh's second series of On The Pool thanks to a petition of more than 60,000 people who thought training in sexual assault wasn't so funny after all. Turn around and lift up your fucking shirt. He appeared contrite in a turtleneck on Newsnight to straighten things out. US pickup artist Julian Blanc, champion of the choke and hold chat up technique, was barred from entering the UK and thrown out of Australia by popular demand. Go Aussies! Was that thanks to your self-appointed women's minister, Tony Abbott? The one smirking and winking because a woman telling him about her serious financial problems worked for a sex line. The one who said women were physiologically unsuited to leadership. Way to lead, Tony. When it came to the web, we all thought the biggest thing to hit the internet was going to be this. But actually, the most popular social media campaign of the year was probably the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls. An explosion of online outrage after Boko Haram militants kidnapped more than 250 Nigerian schoolgirls. Michelle Obama was among five million people who tweeted the hashtag. But almost all the girls are still missing. Maybe there's some other way to help women than selfies and hashtags, like political or maybe even military action. Ah, uh, but what do I know? I'm just a kale-eating feminist. 2014, best year ever. This was a Guardian comment is free video. If you liked it, click here to see more. Property developers overtaking bankers as the new global menace. They're shamelessly greedy. They're tearing apart communities the world over 